Hey, this is a recording on how to manage DNS properly when you have either an internal zone different from an external zone, an internal zone the same as the external zone, or a mix. So the examples we're going to be walking through, at the top you'll see here, inside my Microsoft Active Directory in my network is sample.local. And I have DNS servers in there. And then we have a firewall. And then on the public internet, I own a sample.com public name. And obviously with a public name, I uh, have at least two DNS servers that are publicly out in the internet. We're going to cover this example um, and how things get resolved, which is pretty simple. Remember that dot .local is not legal on the internet, so uh, you don't have to worry about anything conflicting. Here <clears throat> on this bottom example, we have the internal domain has been called sample.com as matches the public domain. So in this scenario, we're going to cover this because the way you query these two DNS servers for sample.com has some special rules and some special management. And uh, the way you query your public resources will be queried out here in these uh, public servers. But you need to understand the interaction of when things get passed across and when they don't. And then there's this combination, which I see at a lot of companies where the internal domain name is something like sample.local, but the external domain name is, is sample.com. However, because they host some resources in their company, they have added a zone onto their DNS server with the public name so they can manage the resources. And we'll show you why that happens. So let's start with the sample.local, sample.com, a simple example. And I'm going to click on here. And basically what happens is um, you have the um, internal domain is different than the external domain. So in this example, when a user's machine queries for something .sample .local, let's say server one, maybe it's a file server, the DNS servers here have that zone, means it's a folder with some records in it, uh, technically a text file. It will give it, whenever a DNS server, any DNS server, whether it's Active Directory or not, have a zone file, that means they are authoritative for that zone. That means if they can't find an answer in that zone, they don't go looking elsewhere. They say there is no answer. And that's how you end up with no answer. So in this case, I'm looking for server one that sample that local. It queries the Active Directory because that's set as our DNS server. Um, the users in your Active Directory, they're part of Active Directory, must use the DNS servers in Active Directory for resolution. You can't put one IP pointing at one of the servers and a second IP in the computer pointing at a public DNS server. That's not permitted. Um, since the evolution of Windows 2003, I believe it was, when the DNS resolver rotates those numbers and doesn't use them in order anymore. So um, our user would use the internal DNS servers. They'd say server one, that sample that local, and the DNS servers would give them an authoritative answer, no problem. Let's look at when the user asked for a public name. So this user Googled for, of course, this is actually wrong here. Let me fix this. They. Google, they queried for the www.google.com to our DNS servers here. Our DNS servers only have a domain zone for a DNS zone for sample.local. So in that case, they use something called root hints or forwarders, depending on how you're set up, and they send that request out to the internet to find the answer from the authoritative machines. Now there's a whole process it walks through here going through the roots, the top guild servers like com to find Google to find an answer for www. Ultimately, I'm just showing it here as one set of servers answering the request for www.google.com, giving them an IP address back. Your DNS servers here would cache that, so if anybody else asks for it, they already have the answer, and they'd cache it for as long as google.com's response tells them they're allowed to, uh, also based on how their cache is configured. But ultimately, this DNS server internally would then provide that to the client. And this happens all the time, every time, at really fast speeds. And that's, uh, uh, again, a good query for a public uh, domain when your internal doesn't match the external. So let's assume you have the internal is the same as the external, okay? Now the internal the same as the external is pretty simple because you're going to have DNS servers here that are authoritative for sample.com. So if you, let me just peek ahead here. Um, yeah, this is show us a good example. So if you query, for example, for domain controller one, dc1.sample.com, because your DNS servers here are authoritative for that name, they will look through there, find an answer, and return the name. If you type something here that doesn't exist, 
the DNS servers internally, these guys, do not, if they don't have a record, then check with the public ones. It doesn't work that way. They just simply say there is no answer and they will return a negative. So that's how your DNS is resolved. Now what's interesting is with the internal being the same as the external, um, you have to um, manage some records. Let me show you an example of that. So we're going to show you two examples in the slide, but I'm going to have to move some things around. So now you buy a web server out on the internet. You're not going to host it in your company. You want to host it out in the internet. So it's called www.sample.com. And uh, let me just steal something here from one of these other, um, these other uh, slides. So out on your public record, your public DNS servers, you're going to make a host record pointing www.sample.com to the IP address. So when people on the internet query it, they can get to your device. However, the internal user is going to query and it gets stopped by these DNS servers. And because they don't have a record for this, they will give no answer. So what you want to do is you want to go into these DNS servers and make a record that matches. Because the host is ha handled outside your organization, and it's on the internet, the record should look the same. Host record should be sample www.com and point to 15, 15, 15, and then your user will get an answer and be able to get a response and then get to the internet. Keep in mind when they do websites, often web server people will want this server to answer, answer for sample.com and www.sample.com. So what they'll end up doing is making two A records, one for dub 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 and one for just sample, okay? And by doing this, if the user types in the browser, just type sample.com, they get there. However, because sample.com is your active directory domain name, you can't do this internally. You're not allowed to. The sample.com, not the, not the www record, but the sample.com will have multiple records pointing to your domain controllers. So don't let your web guy tell you to make a record for this because you will break your Active Directory's authentication capabilities. So internally, you will never be able to type sample.com and get to your website. You'll always have to type sample www.sample.com. So that's how it handles when you're inside your network with the same domain name as public and you're hosting a website or a resource somewhere else. Each time you add a resource out here, you have to make a record both public and private that match. You're going to host this web server inside. Okay. So let's just tell, let's just use this and say it's 10. Let's do 10.10.10.20. We'll take this out because he's not that name and we'll put the web server there. So if we have the server inside, um, I'm going to steal this off another slide here, so I apologize. We have the, we're going to have to give it a NAT, a public IP address that can be hit on the internet from. And then on the firewall, the NAT actually ties these two together. So now with it on the inside, your host record on the inside would have to point to the real uh, resource. Though there is a trick to getting this to work with the public one and doing a loopback NAT, we just typically look at it this way. You're not going to leave your network to come hit your firewall on the outside to try to get an added to it. So the user can simply go directly and connect directly to the server from their desktop at 10.10.10.20. So inside on the zone www.sample.com A record, we would make it point at the private one. And on the public side, we would make it point at the NATed address so when the user's out here, they get answers from this one and can hit it through the firewall and the users in here get a different answer. And that's how you handle that, okay? Just remember, sample.com, let's just say the domain controllers were 10.10.10.5 and 6. These will typically look as um, like this. If you actually look at a Microsoft zone um, file, they'll say same as parent. And you'll often get to a web developer who doesn't really know this, and they'll say, okay, I, dub, 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 that works, but sample.com doesn't. Why don't you make a record for sample.com to point to 10.10.10.20? 10 
And the reason you'd never do that is because when a machine comes online in Active Directory, it needs to do any authentication, Kerberos ticketing, finding DNS, whatever it is, not finding DNS, but finding service records, it queries for the name sample.com. And if you get the web server instead of one of the DCs, your Active Directory will fail for this user. It also could cause it to fail between domain controllers and cause you to have um, uh, re replication problems, tombstoning of Active Directory, a whole bunch of other issues. So only records that should point to your domain name uh, in your AD, whatever your domain name is, is the, the domain controller records. So DC records. So that's that. So there's one more combination we look at. I see this a lot where the internal domain name is a .local. And the reason they use .local, by the way, is because it's not valid on the internet. So nobody can try to hack you through sample.local because it's not routable on the internet. Um, <clears throat> it's not, not just not routable, it's not a supported top level domain. But they added a domain sample.com internally, okay? And this is typically done because you're getting hosting services. So um, I'm gonna show this simple example, of two examples of how you manage records for these similar to the other one. So in this case, uh, we know when the user queries something in sample.local, these boxes are going to answer and they'll get their answer. When they query something internally at sample.com, www.sample.com, if this public record is out here and it's created to point at the web server, Public users can query these boxes, get an answer, and connect. But internal users will query, hit these servers, and they will not have a sample.com. They'll have a sample.local. So what some people have done is added a zone for sample.com. And then you would have to make, it would still give you no answer until you add a host record in that zone. So this would be actually inside the zone sample.com, not sample.local. And then you would get the correct answer and your user would be able to connect to the website out on the internet, okay? So one would ask, well, why would you do that? Why would you create a zone in here called sample.com when you don't have any sample.com resources? It's a really good question. You probably wouldn't. You would just let these answer for sample.com on the public internet each and every time for both your internal users and your externals. But I made another slide up here, last slide to show you why people make that zone sample.com in here okay and the reason typically is they're hosting a computer internally um, and they want to um, resolve that internally by the name their default domain name is the ad so we can't resolve it there like we saw in the previous two couple slides ago so in this scenario you have a web server with a private ip natted to a public ip to handle the, 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 the public users is fairly simple. You have to have a uh, public record in your DNS servers. So when they query sample.com, they get the answer and they can make the connection to here, which ultimately collects them through the firewall to here. For the internal users, however, if we didn't, we, we have sample.local as our domain name and we didn't add this zone, they would actually get their answers from here, which would be the wrong answer. It would be the outside net, not the private address. So what companies will do, and a lot of them have done this, is add another zone into your uh, DNS structure. It doesn't affect uh, Active Directory, by the way, so you can actually do whatever you want. Like, for example, out here, you'll see web guys sample.com pointing to the same thing as dub, dub, dub. And that's good because this doesn't handle Active Directory. Well, what you'd have to do is you'd have to go and create this zone. Then in there, you'd make a record for, in the sample.com zone, this would be in the zone, you would make a host record for www and point it at that IP address. And because it's not an active directory, you could just, um, let me just put the whole name in there. And then you could just make one for sample.com too. Oops, can't type. And you can make these two records there now. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and what'll happen is when the internal users query, the AD server here has an authoritative zone for it, and it will answer with the correct answer. Whether you type sample.com or www.sample.com, they'll go to that web server 
and connect to it privately rather than trying to go over the internet. Um, so this is the most common one I see out there. And if you have a, a zone, but it's not your Active Directory zone for your uh, Microsoft AD, but you have an extra zone in here, the key is to um, make sure you manage these records correctly. And I'll give you one more example. We're gonna put another server out here and we're gonna call this server portal.sample.com. And it's gonna be at, let's say, some hosting company, let's say 202020. That's the company it's at, it's way out here on the internet. Let's put it up here. All right, so in order to make this work, the first thing I have to do is I have to go into here and portal.sample.com equals 20, 20, 20, 20. No problem. Now, my um, if the public user queries portal.sample.com, they will get the right answer and they will connect. No problem. However, if the internal user queries portal.sample.com, they're going to get this record, the www record, because it's the sample.com domain. And it's usually what's called a catch-all. If you type scooby-doo.sample.com and there's no record, that catch-all can be given as the answer, and it's not the right answer. So you actually have to go into here and do portal.sample.com and point it to, oops, can't type, 20.20.20.20. And you'd have to point it at the public IP to be correct. So if you're inside getting the wrong address, you probably forgot to make a record that points to the public resource. Okay, you need to do this even if this server is outside on the internet. If the server's on the outside, okay, and let's just say this was at 15, 15, 15, 15, like the previous slide, um, you would have to have um, these records matching. They have to match where they really are. And this is the one I think I've seen recently in, in recent problems is they have the website here, they were getting they were getting 15, 15, 15, 15 answers. But once they make the record there to point at the portal on the inside and let their DNS servers replicate, they should get the right answer. Okay? Simple as that. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.